So today we'll make an attempt to quickly run to the entire canto, to the entire section of 46 sentences, 185 lines, and get a kind of overall picture of the way in which the theme is developed or in which Savitri begins, epic Savitri begins. As I told you many times, that this is one of the most difficult cantos, rather this particular section, first section itself, is one of the most difficult sections in the whole of Savitri. It is rich in every respect. There is new poetry, there is new symbolism, there is occult knowledge, there is metaphysics, spiritual metaphysics, there are allusions to other poetry creations and if you want to really get into this canto, the first thing which we must have is a good preparation on our side in every respect. And I would say the good preparation would mean basically going through the entire work of Shriya all his prose writings, his letters, his life divine, his uh, essays on the Gita, his writings on the Vedas, they are absolutely necessary. Of course, uh, letters on poetry also. And then, along with that, along with the prose writings of Shrevendu, the voluminous writings of Shrevendu, we should also make it a point to get into the works of the mother. So unless you have read sufficiently, thoroughly, the mother's works and Shrevendu's works, I would say, it is perhaps impossible to get into Savitri and certainly impossible to get into the first section of Savitri itself, you see. <laughs> so you have to have a real wide preparation, encyclopedic knowledge, at the same time a good command over the English language, a good acquaintance with English poetry and all his writings then only we might venture into this particular exercise of reading the symbol dawn. Even then, even then, that wouldn't do. That wouldn't do, that will not do. You had to have some kind of an intuitive perception of things. You had to have some sort of a spiritual opening in you for the yogic knowledge which is present here. So unless that psychic spiritual thing opens out, we cannot really make out anything from this canto. In spite of that, we are making an effort <laughs> to read this epic, this Savitri, and try to grasp as much as possible for our minds whatever perceptions we can get from that. Now the very first sentence itself, as I told you, is a most complex sentence. It was the hour before the gods awake. Most complex sentence in the sense that the first half of it belongs to the past. It was the hour, was. The second half belongs to the continuing, continuing present. The present which goes on and on and on and on, including the future also. So it is a kind of a union of the past and the future. From the grammatical construction, we can see that thing straight away here. Now, that is very purposeful very meaningful, very significant. 
why he had chosen, so to say, chosen is the wrong word, still, why he had chosen to do so? Because in one sentence, he is already talking in the first half of the process of involution, the past. Process of involution. In the second half, he is talking of the process of evolution already. So, he has already introduced the entire theme of this creation, involution and evolution. In the very first sentence itself, it was the hour before the gods awake, you see. Now, involution, it was the hour, corresponds to the appearance of zero, shunya, nothingness, nothingness. In other words, the Supreme emptied himself out thoroughly, completely. He had emptied himself out thoroughly, so that nothing of his is left in it. Unbodied infinite, as the phrase says here later on, unbodied infinite, that is the zero. He has given up his body completely, and yet he is the infinite. In the other language, we can say that Brahma wanted to bring about a creation. Brahma is the creator of this universe. He wanted to bring about the universe. How does he do that? How does Brahma bring about a creation? He does tapas. Tapas. Concentration. 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 Withdraw within yourself, withdraw, withdraw within yourself, withdraw, 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 continuously within yourself. You have withdrawn so much, so much within yourself that you lost contact with the outside. You have become unaware of things. You have so much involved within yourself that you have lost contact with the outside at all. You have forgotten yourself, what you are, where you have come from. So much you have withdrawn here. That is the involution. You have become to zero. Now, who has become to zero? Brahma himself. The infinite himself has become to zero. So, as if behind that zero, inside that zero, in the womb of the zero, is already present that infinite, that Brahma. He has emptied himself out and yet he is there, but now withdrawn, completely withdrawn. So, that is the involution. Or in the mother's story, as we have seen many times, in the universal manifestation, the four powers went so far away from the Supreme that they turned into their opposites. Consciousness became inconscious, life became death, bliss became suffering, truth became falsehood. They went so far away, so far away, so far away. I will say the stories, both these descriptions are parallel what the mother is speaking or the four powers separating or Brahma withdrawing himself within, he is within, within, he is cutting himself off completely from the soul itself, within. He has become unaware of outside things at all. Outside means the universal presence, the supreme presence, he has become unaware of it totally, you see. So, we have in the first pass the involution, in the second part, is the evolution. Now, the evolution has to proceed to correct the involution. Our involution is the first lap for a certain kind of a manifestation. Evolution is the first lap for a certain kind of a manifestation. Evolution is the second lap for the fulfillment of that manifestation. Unless you empty yourself out, you cannot start evolution. That is what it means, you see. And that evolution is for the purposes of bringing out here, in this creation, all the godly qualities, all the divine qualities, all the supramental faculties in operation here. And it is that which is here described in the second line, 
at the divine event. The divine event immediately pertains to evolution. The divine event immediately pertains to evolution. And it is in that process of evolution that the divine qualities have to come into manifestation. The divine creation itself, you see. Now, the dilemma here is, well, the evolution has to proceed. The divine event has to march on. The divine manifestation has to take place here. But there is a problem. There is an issue that against this, across the path of this divine event, there is the mind of night which is standing in the way. Mind of night which is coming in the way. Now he has immediately introduced again third element. Well, involution, evolution, the march of evolution, the appearance of the supramental manifestation and the difficulty for that manifestation to take place because of the mind of night. Because of the mind of night. Now we have already seen what that mind of night is. Well, as far as we could understand, so to say, it is the physical mind which is now coming in the way of the supramental manifestation. And it is that which has to go away, you see, with the physical mind, the mind of inconscience, the mind of darkness, it is that which has to go away. This mind, see, it is not night, it is the night's mind, which is very, it is the night's, the mind of the night, night's mind, which is coming in the way, it's not the mind proper, it is not night proper, but the night's mind, which is coming in the way. Night's mind means, that mind which consolidates all the gains it receives from its source. The physical mind receives whatever is required for its sustenance and maintenance and stabilization from the night it holds on. Mind holds on whatever it receives from the night and therefore it becomes a terrible obstacle to remove that thing, see, mind. This mind of night, as I told you earlier, uh, was a necessary step in the process of evolution. The appearance of mind of night itself, rather, the appearance of night itself is a major advance in the evolution. It is already a major advance in the evolution. There was absolute zero. There was nothing. And if anything has to appear in that nothing, then it must be able to withstand the power of that all swallowing zero, all swallowing nothing. It will keep on devouring whatever is coming into picture. In order to give stability to that, you need something to hold on. And it is that which is done by the mind of night. So the mind of night is serving a useful purpose. But now, as far as the divine, is con divine event is concerned, it is acting as a block. And that has to be changed. In other words, you have to convert the mind of night into the mind of light. The entire problem here is to convert the mind of night into the mind of light. So that is what we already see. The problem is evolution is described in the first half. In the second half, evolution is described. For the evolution, there is an obstacle in the form of the mind of night and one has to tackle this mind of night. That is how the theme is developing here. In her only temple of eternity. Now here, in the somber symbol of her eyeless mute abysm, the unbodied infinite. What does one feel, one who can see? Unbodied infinite. As I told you, Brahma has lost total awareness. The infinite has lost his form, structure, everything completely. He has become abysm, deep abyss, you see. Fathomless zero occupied. Now, this is the perception, this is the difficulty. Almost one felt opaque in pain. Of whose the unbodied infinite is the perception. Whose perception it is? It is the perception of the night. Eyeless muse, she is thinking blindly, without knowing things, without seeing things. She is thinking, she is brooding upon things. And what does she see? Night is seeing that there is the unbodied infinite. 
and that unbodied infinite is nothing but a fathomless zero. That unbodied infinite is nothing but that fathomless zero. She herself is saying that, and therefore she feels a kind of a difficulty in that. Night herself is saying that, and then the description moves on further. So this this unbodied infinite is the perception of night, and that perception is equivalent to the fathomless zero occupying the world. In other words. the night herself is already a great advance over the unbodied infinite over the zero from the zero the night has come what does the night see now night sees that there is the unbodied infinite zero and she is wondering what happens what to do what kind of thing will happen there is a power of fallen boundless self between the first and the last nothing is Fall, fallen a power now from mind of night things are moving forward see the zero is there zero is now occupied by whom by the fallen self the zero is occupied by the fallen self in other words night is seeing that after all in this zero is present the infinite himself she is musing she is brooding she is thinking that in this zero who is present after all the infinite himself unbodied infinite brahma himself has withdrawn so in that withdrawal who is there brahma himself in that sense is it and that power of that self now what does she she recalls the tenebrous womb from which she came she recalls the dark womb that is her own darkness and she turns to the insidious mystery of birth and the tardy process of mortality she is trying all that kind of a thing and then what does she want to do she longs to reach its end in vacant not the mystery is so deep that it is unsolvable for her and therefore she recalls all the difficulties it is an insidious mystery and that kind of a thing and therefore she kind of gives up things and she want okay let me go back where from i have come let me go back where from i have come so from the power of the self which is there that power is feeling kind of frustrated that it cannot operate and get things done the way things have got to be done and therefore it wants to go back from the not from which she had come she wants so that everything is kind of dissolved it is prakriti laya dissolution of prakriti in the nothing completely and therefore everything stops out to be the real this is a frustrating experience nothing is going to happen and therefore she says let me go back to the vacant not the zero but then all this is happening because there is a semblance of the unknown the way the unknown is doing in the brightness in the same manner things are happening here repeating ever the unconscious act prolonging the unseen will the semblance cradles the ignorant force the way things are done in the supreme manifestation the same way in the darkness here this ignorant force is now kind of supported nourished by that semblance semblance cradles the cosmic drought and what of this cause of ignorant force do in her creative slumber she creates the suns it is this ignorant force who is creating the suns in the night she creates the suns in the night the ignorant she does not know she does not understand all that thing but that is what is happening and carries over lies in a somnambulist world then because of she creating the suns in the night there is the earth who is wheeling in the hollow gulls she has created suns she has created earth in the hollow gulls. what is the earth a shadow spinning to a soulless void very similarly 
calmly stupor without mind or life. There is no mind, there is no life there at all. Only matter, material existence alone. Forgetful earth, wheeled abundant in the hollow realm. Forgetful of her spirit and her fate. What is her spirit? She is carrying the psychic being within herself. She has no knowledge of it yet. She has forgotten that she has the psychic being in her. What is her fate? Her fate is to carry the evolution. To see that the divine event arrives. That is her fate. She has forgotten that. And therefore, earth is aimlessly moving in the space. Now, all this thing is watched dispassionately, witnessed by the, imp- by the impassive skies. This drowse, this ignorant force, this action, everything is watched by the... In other words, there is a frustration. She wants to go back to the knot. Earth is feeling abandoned, so there is a degree of frustration everywhere that things are not going to move forward. And the skies are watching it without any kind of involvement in the things which are happening here, without any help coming from anywhere. Then something inscrutable in the inscrutable darkness, something stirred in the inscrutable darkness. When this was a kind of a frustration, for that divine, that for that fallen self's power and the earth, when there was that kind of a frustration, something stirred. What stirred? An idea. An idea which was never thought of. An idea which... What is the idea? The idea is that which has awakened in conscience to ignorance. It has awakened in conscience to ignorance. Something stirred. Now, this is a superhuman element which has entered here. There was frustration, there was zero, everything was occupied by zero alone, and no way seemed to be there ahead of it at all, you see. But then something stirred. This is a supernatural element now. Something stirred. And inconscient woke to ignorance. Now, as I told you, from the zero, the appearance of night is a great advance in evolution. From night, the appearance of the mind of night is yet another advance in evolution. From that stage, the appearance of ignorance here now is another great advance. Ignorance is incomplete knowledge. It is not absence of knowledge. It is incomplete knowledge. So, there is now a great advance already taking place here because something stirred in this void. That idea brought it forward. Now, this is an unthought idea. It is not premeditated. It happened in the whole process by itself, you see. And then, because of that idea, a throw, a kind of a spasm, a disturbance, birth pang, throw, spasm, that came and left a quivering tree, gave room for an old, tired one. So again, that want which is there, it got kind of stirred up here. For what? To raise its head and look for absent light. It, it is looking for the absent light. Straining close eyes of vanished memory. Yes, I was there. It was so beautiful and all can She is kind of seeing those things here. And only meets like one who well, that is all right. A piece. So, a throw, a spasm, a birth pan, gave room for the old tired one. See, there was the frustration. There was the tiredness. And still, that something which stirred, wakened up. No, you can't give up. You have to go on and carry forward. Gave room for an old, tired want. It was as though, even in this not so profound, even in this ultimate dissolution score, ultimate dissolution score, that is the all swallowing zero, there lurked an unremembering entity. Brahma, who had lost his total awareness, he is still there. And it is that which is remembered. There lurked an unremembering entity. He is present there. It is, after all, the infinite himself who has become unbodied infinite. So that infinite is present there already in that, you see. And it remembers a survivor of a slain and buried past. Now, it is that which has to resume the effort and the pang. Yes? 
you have given a frustration, but something stirred, the idea awoke, and the idea renewed the desire to carry things forward. And therefore, the old effort was renewed, reviving in another frustrated world. Means another attempt was now made, so to say, to carry things forward. You see, an unshaped consciousness desired light. Obviously, there is no shape of consciousness at all. It's only inconscience, indeterminate, desired light, and a blank pression yearned to a distant change. So already that idea which was present there, it stirred itself and things have started. Meaning within the process of evolution, there is already something built into it to push it forward. Within itself, there is something which is pushing things forward, you see. That is important. And unshaped consciousness, desired light, and a blank pression. So there is a pression. Yes, something bright is going to happen tomorrow. And it is that which is desiring a change, you see. How? As if a childlike finger, childlike finger. Now all this is, which is happening here, is in its infancy. The world, the inconscience waking up to ignorance, the unwanted wish becoming again alive, the urge to grow is becoming active. That is in this state of infancy. And therefore the childlike finger, it is that infancy which is telling the whole thing, look, you can't give up, you can't get frustrated about these things. You have to do things, you have to carry. I mean, the urge is already built into the system and that urge, that infancy is telling us you cannot abandon this creation. You have to take it forward, you have to go for a heedless mother. An infant longing clutch this somber wall. So that urge is telling you, yes, you have to go ahead. You can't stop with this thing at all. You can't. You have to carry on. And because that insistence or that idea or the child like that or that infant finger pressing the cheek of the executive power who had given all hopes, it is that insistence which is telling you have to go forward. And as a result of that, something good happened. What did that good happen? Insensibly, somewhere, a breach began. There was a break, there was a cliff. There was an opening for something to happen in that process. A long, low line of hesitating you, like a vague smile, tempting a desert or desert, all forlorn. Nothing is going there. But now that desert has suddenly started smiling because that urge has become active, wants to do something like a vague smile, tempting a desert, uh, trouble the far rim of life, obscure the sleep, trouble, disturb, stirred up sleep. Now, this is what is happening from below. That longing has come, that urge is there, that insistence is there, and the frustration which was reigning over them, that is now kind of displaced and there is a further movement. But it is when this has happened, when that stirring has taken place from below, that something is coming from above, from the other side in this pond. Unless you make a move, nothing will come from the other side. You have to push yourself further as much as possible and then there will be a response to see. So there is a response to that urge which has stirred up now here. Arise from the other side of boundlessness and I, your, who has arrived? And I, your deity. The deity who sees everything, this and that, who sees everything, it is that now which is seeing what is going to happen here. And there is a new kindled hope here which is poured from above. It is supporting it. I mean, there is a response, a positive response to this urge which is sprouting and growing from here, you see. It's, and I, your deity, appears to the dumb deity. It seems amid heavy top, the cosmic rain, the top power of a sick and weary world, to seek a spirit, 
soul and desolate, to fall into the skillet, forgotten brain. And arise from the other side of boundless end, and I, your deity, pierce the dumb deep. That is the response from the other side, you see, intervening in a mindless universe. Mind is not a right. The whole scene is the scene of life, an unthought idea. The whole scene is intervening in a mindless universe. Its message, script, its message, the message of deity, is script through the reluctant heart. This hush was us not responding, which was lethargically lying there as it is. It recalls. Calling the adventure, it calls for the adventure of consciousness and joy. So that response which is there, it is now insisting something from here that it must recall consciousness, joy, and conquering nature's delusion, compelled renewed consent, renewed consent. Yes, you have to give the consent again and again and again. You can't give up. You can't abandon things and get into the vacant knot. That is not the purpose. Laya is not the purpose of this thing. You have to take things forward. And therefore, it is insisting, this eye of deity is insisting a consent from her. Madam, you have to go and do your work, you see. To see and feel. Now, as a result of that, because this insistence, a thought was sown, because this was a mindless universe. This was a mindless universe. In that mindless universe, a thought was sown in the unsounded void. This, the depth of void which was not plumbed into that void, a thought is sown. Is sown you see. A sense was born. So what happened to that as a response? A thought was sown, a sense was born, a memory quivered, a soul long dead, for more to live. So all these things happened as a result of that. A thought was sown, a sense was born, a memory quivered, as if a soul long dead were moved to live. They were no there at all. They were compelled to live and take things on. This is what is happening as a result of that response from the other side of boundlessness coming here, you see. But the oblivion that succeeded the fall, the oblivion that succeeded the fall, the divine had taken the plunge here and he had become, he had fallen into this one. So what happened? Because that fall, he had forgotten himself completely, oblivion. He has become oblivious of himself. The oblivion, the succeed the fall, had blotted. So that oblivion has removed, dissolved, emptied out the past. Whatever had happened earlier, whatever experiences were experienced earlier, they were renewed, had blotted the crowded tablets of the past, and all that were destroyed must be rebuilt. Because the oblivion had destroyed everything, that must be rebuilt. That experience must be levered out once more. You can't help it. You have to undergo through the whole cycle. In fact, this is what happens when you take a new birth. You quickly recapitulate all that you have done in the previous life and then take forward, you see. You, can, you have to live through that and then take this forward, you see. And an old experience labored out once more. In other words, in the new cycle, whatever were the gains of the earlier cycle, they had to be recapitulated and made an asset for your further progress here, you see. And old experience labored out once more. So, a thought was sown, a sense was born, memory quivered, but the oblivion is there in spite of that and you have to labor out again and do things. Yes, all can be done with the God touch is there. You have to renew it, you have to go through the whole cycle again, but if the God touch is there, there is no difficulty about that. The God touch is there if you are applying yourself to it, if you are working for it. If you want to simply go back into the vacant knot and disappear, God touch is not going to help you. You have to work, you have to exercise yourself and then wait for the God touch to arrive. You have to wait for God touch will come, you have to wait for the God touch to arrive. As a result of that aspiration, that deity piercing the dumb deity, as a result of the God touch, 
what had happened the hope still seen all of the frustration she wanted to go back and wake it not but now some hope has got kindled here some hope earth was feeling abandoned in the hollow gun as if there is no help helping hand for her but now there is a helping hand for her god touches there god's helping hand is there amid the nice forlorn indifferent nice forlorn night is indifferent to all these things in spite of that there is a possibility of a hope now working things here in the night how that hope is working the hope is an errant marvel and that errant marvel that hope is looking for a place in an alien world an errant marvel looking for solicited in an alien world a place to live that hope is looking for some place to work here to live here into a far off nook of heaven there came a slow miraculous gestures dim the peel there is a response from heaven far off nook of heaven is not here you know, not very close over earth but somewhere far off in the skies up there there came a slow miraculous gestures dim the peel so the hope is just looking for a place to be here to see the possibility if it's blossoming sees now some kind of a brightness in the sky and feels happy that it will materialize orphan and driven to speak a home an errant marvel with no place to live into a far off nook of heaven there came a slow miraculous gestures dim happy yes who is the solicited who is the solicited errant marvel errant marvel alien marvel is soliciting for a place to live in an alien world because it has lost its way you know shradavan she has a book yeah you have it no yeah did you read what she said? i read that because for her and it's it was a, a surprise for me i mean but after reading one or two time i accepted also like she said she said she said the solicited here it's not a, there are there are differences adjective and for her it's the appeal yes and who is like ah. solicited the appeal is uh, yeah. uh, as yes, if the appeal was solicited and i will read i will i will read what i will read what she says different meaning so look yeah i know that <laughs> and you read it yeah, i know that yeah. yeah so what do you say this is a rather difficult sentence the subject of the sentence is an errant marvel yeah okay fine errant means wandering even lost this marvel has no place to live because it is orphaned it has lost its parents and its native place it has been driven out to look for a home the picture is almost like a little beggar girl who is appealing for help to solicit means to ask for something she is an alien world our world is a strange place to her she is timid shy fearful she feels hesitant to ask for anything she even to use the word hazardous which suggests danger as if that lovely lost being is in danger running some kind of risk and yet has to appeal for help in the gesture that she makes there is an instinctive grace etc as if solicited in an mean an errant marvel solicited in an alien world a place to live that is the simple structure what is that errant errant marvel that hope see because he has a hope stolen it is stealing through all these things hope into a far off nook of heaven there came a slow now in response to that because of the divine response now a slow miracle is just dim the peel and because of that response there is a persistent thrill 
first is saying three or four kind of a transfiguring touch obviously means the hope is feeling now persuaded the inert black quiet the black quiet you know, itself is persuaded by this transfiguring touch so it's a great thing which is and beauty and wonder disturbed the fields of god means it is beauty and wonder who have walked now they are running on the fields of god you see beauty and, and thrill of transfiguring the transfiguring touch you see so all this is happening because of the response from the other side of boundlessness there was the frustration earth had given up hope she had the force had given up all the hope she wanted to go into the vacant not but the power of evolution is there and it has carried things power to such an extent that inconscient become ignorance and the infancy of that whole process touch the figure finger from the cheek of the mother and said mother you can't give up you have to go further up and in response to that an eye of deity is coming from the other side and taking things forward you see and beauty and wonder disturb the fields of god beauty and wonder disturb now this is what the mother says the sign of the arrival of the avatar you see sign of the arrival of the avatar you see what disturb huh? disturb disturb means uh, uh, stirred up and uh, disturbed not in the negative sense in the positive means that there was a mute there was a quiet there was a deadness in that but some kind of an activity got introduced <laughs> disturbed is a very positive word here yeah yeah and a wandering hand a pale enchanted light hand whose hand or that deity the, the avatar what avatar is huh? the avatar when you say this is the arrival of the avatar yeah, yes. the sign the avatar no that is not going to describe ah. it is the sign of the arrival of the avatar some kind of a divine incarnation is about to take place it's like it's not yet there it's an announcement it will come no you see the, this is in a general sense that the divine is going to uh, appear here that is all it means to see here oh. it does not say rama or krishna or christ or shivendu or anything no not the avatar the divine appearance divine incarnation in the mortal world in this difficult situation it is the appearance of the divine that is the avatar who to see you see i mean that according to the tradition the very first avatar is the avatar in the nature in the form of a fish matsya yeah. vishnu's first avatar is fish that itself is a divine event big event you see and the whole the whole parable of evolution is in that 10 avatars of vishnu the avatar 10 avatars of vishnu. a wandering hand a pale enchanted light that glowed along a fading moment of ring that deity fixed with gold panel and of present thing a gate or dream so what is that hand done that hand has fixed a gate of dreams and that gate is ajar on mysteries birth is open to the mysteries birth that is what the hand of deity has done you see so you see this the whole thing is very systematically developed yeah. there was frustration there was uh, no hope at all and then something got stirred and then there is the response from the other side and everything which was lost in the oblivion is recovered and all can be done if the god touch is there that things can be carried forward from this point onward a gate of dream i have told you about all that gold panel is it we had a long <laughs> discussion about it see we not go into that thing one lucent corner windowing hidden thing for the world's blind immensity to sight world is blind world cannot see but that hand has opened the gate and it is forcing you to see look through that window what marvels are present what greatness is present a gate of dreams ajar on mysteries worlds one lucent corner window in hidden thing <laughs> for the world's blind immensity to sight the darkness fail obviously 
that is the great names which has happened. So that is what the hand of deity has done. Then to the palliative rift, the same at first, hardly enough for a trickle from the sun. He says, from the sun, a little opening was made, and that opening was so small that it could hardly receive all that the suns are trying to pour to them. It is only trickling. Sun, sun of beauty, sun of joy, sun of love, sun of sweetness. All the suns, they are trying to pour something on this creation and that outpour the revelation in the plane, outpour the revelation in the plane. Mother says definitely this is the sign of the avatars coming, revelation in the plane. The brief perpetual sign recurred above. What is the sign telling you? What is the sign telling you? The sign is telling you that there is going to be the revelation and the flame. The revelation and the flame is going to appear. Recurred above, constantly it is appearing, appearing, appearing. Blazing, blazing. The sun is blazing in the sky constantly. The brief perpetual sign recurred above in the sky. Now this is the sign of the coming of the avatar already. It means that, yes, he is bound to come now. Soon he will come. Soon he will come here. As a result of that, a glamour from the unreached transcendences, a message from the unknown, dawn with her aura of magnificent hues. So dawn is a glamour from the unreached transcendences. Dawn is a message also from the unknown immortal light. It is that dawn who has built her aura of wonderful colors in the sky. Wonderful colors, magnificent hues, hue of love, joy, sweetness, all those qualities which are present there. Are present. And buried its seed of grandeur in the hours. Dawn build the aura and dawn buried the seeds of that aura in the flow of time, in the moments of time, in the hours. Yeah. An instant visitor, the Godhead shone, that Godhead again, that dawn, that glamour, that message, all of them. An instant visitor, the Godhead shone on life's thin border, a while the vision stood. Again, vision, Godhead, visitor, there, there are kind of equivalent terms you receive and bend over us, pondering forehead curve. Now that vision, so to say, is interpreting a recondite beauty and bliss in colors, hieroglyphs of mystic sense. It wrote the lines of a significant myth. Lines of a significant myth. It, that vision, it wrote the lines of a significant myth. Significant myth. It is the myth of Savitri, the story of Savitri, the unfoldment of the evolutionary process of the divine manifestation. It wrote the lines of a significant way. Yes, it is going to happen. What is right? It is going, all it is going to tell you, tell of a greatness of spiritual dawn. The dawns which have already gone by, that myth is telling you of that. It also is going to tell you of the dawn which is to come, telling of a great age of spiritual dawn, a brilliant gold pen, the sky for peace. Now with that epic, with that myth, with that glory shining in the sky, that vision standing there, almost that day, almost, not fully, almost that day, the epiphany was disclosed. Yes, here you are, the divine manifestation, there you are, all of which were thoughts and hopes a signal fair, a lonely splendor from the invisible goal, almost as flung on the opaque in name. All that is blank, opaque, impenetrable for light, it is on that it is shown. Once more, a trade part of the vacant war, a trade part of a trade. 
of the divine goddess moved on the vacant once more it had been happening earlier because of the dawns were there of the previous dawns were there of the spiritual dawns so again once more the trait part of the vacant was infinity center again that vision that godhead what is that it is infinity center it is a face it is a form once more a trait part of the vacant one infinity center a face of rapturous calm parted the tunnel lids that open heaven a form from far beatitude seem to near so you are able to see now somebody is coming on the horizon who is that form that form is the ambassadress she has been sent as an ambassador ambassador between eternity and change she is coming from eternity to the world of change she is bringing some kind of ambassadorial message to this world of ours who is that omniscient who is that ambassadress she is also the omniscient goddess she knows everything she is the divine power of manifestation in the new creation in the new creation she is the power of divine manifestation she knows everything she has come here that change has to enter into eternity that rap defeated jarring krishna and saw the spaces ready for her feet in her omniscience she says that look things are becoming ready now for me to walk in she will walk in later on taking mortal birth ready for her feet she will walk in this mortal world taking mortal birth later on she sees that possibility already in her omniscience today she is seeing that immediately tomorrow it may not happen but that is bound to happen that she says she even to says as early as in 1918 i see india free all the 1980 when purani asked him when will be india free he said i already see it free mother saw in 1935 india is free 1935 it took time for that thing to happen it happened again in a little calamitous way which is because of human interference human stupidities which came into play you are seeing now here it sees already the space is ready not today that she has come and she has gone back not like that she will come she will do over she will go back she will come the spaces are now getting ready here and saw the spaces ready for her feet that goddess is already seeing that thing once she half looked behind her veiled sun behind her because she has come as an ambassador from eternity she has come to change so the sun is veiled to her she is looking behind then thoughtful went to her a mortal work went to her a mortal work she sees that the spaces are ready yet she also understand that she has to do still a lot of a mortal work for things to happen here so she is now continuing to do that immortal work here then thoughtful she is considerate about all these things weighing every possibility when to her immortal work immortal what is immortal work immortal work for things to be really ready to proceed further things are ready for the divine avatar to come here and do his work she sees that immortal work to be done in other words the ground has to be prepared for the incarnation of the divine here the divine needs a certain kind of a preparation here if things have to move forward you see then thoughtful went to her immortal work and as a result of this break great big change wonderful things are happening earth fell the imperishable passage closed yes the divine is coming closer and closer now all fell the imperishable passage imperishable because imperishable because change 
eternity and change. So in that context, imperishable. Waking ear. So earth felt the passage clue. Waking ear of nature heard her steps. Her or that omniscient God is coming. She already sees that thing. Her step and wideness turned to her his limitless eye. Wideness turned wideness's limitless eye to her and scattered on silent her luminous smile kindled to fire the silent to the world. This is what we have seen many times. So earth felt the so because of her readiness, because of that thing, because of that response. The God touch is already working here. It has already brought about so many things here, beautiful things. You see, all grew kindled to fire, kindled to fire. The yajna is now set of flame. All grew with consecration and arrived. All grew. Every action, every activity is an offering to the divine. Offering to the divine for the divine to come and reside in it. It is not only of yes. I am offering you for that, so that you come and decide here. All grew a consecration and a rite, a kind of a religious ceremony is being seen here. Air is a vibrant link between earth and heaven. The vibrant hymn of a great priestly wind arose and fell upon the altar hill. The high boughs spread in a revealing sky. So this is the response of the omniscient God is coming. The God touch is really working. It has brought about all these big, 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 big changes that the divine incarnation is about to take place. This Vedic ceremony, this invocation, this yajna is an invitation for the divine to come as an avatar. All guru, this is an invitation for the divine to come as an author, you see. Without that invitation, he wouldn't come. But it is she who has prepared the ground for this to happen. That is the immortal work in which she was engaged. She is engaged. Here, where our half-lit ignorance comes. Half-lit ignorance, that is our mental capacity, mental faculty on the dumb bosom, to the ambiguous. Here, where one knows not, even the step in front, and truth has a throne in the shadowy back of doubt, on an anguished, precarious field of toil, how spread many, some large, differently, impartial witness to a joy. Our prostrate soil bowed, awakening rain. So here, in spite of all these limitations and imperfections, our process soil is able to bear that new ray which is going to awaken things here, awakening rays. So that is the power of the yajna, our process soil. Here to the vision and prophetic claim. Again, that glamour, that message, that ambassador is here, that vision and prophetic claim. Lit into miracles, common, meaningless, see. All our daily activities, daily routine, they got kindled, they got kindled in her consciousness. Then the divine effect. She has done her work. The messenger has come and the messenger has delivered the message. She has done her work. Here too the vision then prophetically led into miracles, common meaningless shape. Well, to kind of give a specific emphasis, Maybe one could have put a full stop here. Here too, the vision and prophetic claim lead to the miracles, common, meaningless shape. Stop. Yeah. And then, then the divine of letters spent, withdrew. So whatever message it had to deliver, it has delivered. It came with a brief, brief, the divine knowledge, the letters, the divine knowledge which she had received. She had delivered for a specific purpose. It is done, spent. She has gone back, withdrew. Unwanted. She is no more wanted now because whatever was required has been given. And perhaps we are not yet ready. 
to receive something more than what she has already given were not ready so unwanted she goes back unwanted feeding from the mortals unwanted she is unwanted <coughs> because the divine avatar has to come and carry things forward the avatar hood she even though explains in the sridham gita has a double purpose to remove all the past difficulties all the past difficulties whatever is evil in this creation let us be destroyed that is one small function of the avatar but the most significant function of the avatar is to lay the foundation of the future evolution to take the evolution forward one more step to remove the evil which is there that is one part one small part of the avatar's work but to lay the foundation for the future that is the major work of the avatar and therefore it is that which is going to be done by him not by her not by her. the foundation will be laid by him not by her. and therefore she is unwanted she has to go back she has to make room for his arrival you <laughs> see <laughs> unwanted fading from the mortal's reign she has gone back but she has not gone back without leaving some gifts to us she has left toffees for us toffees in our hands <laughs> so that we can enjoy things the a sacred yearning what is the toffee one of the stay one of the toffees is a sacred yearning lingered in our soul there is the yearning for the arrival of the avatar that is the sweetest kind of a toffee we can have you see a sacred yearning lingered in his day the worship of a presence and a power it is that which has got kindled in us the worship too perfect to be held but is bound hard the prescience of a marvelous birth so there is the prescience that a new birth will take place the divine birth will occur that is the sweetest kind of a toffee she has left for us you see chocolate or whatever to call it you see yes she has done that thing she has done her job only a little the god like can stay she has to go back spiritual beauty eliminating human side lying to this passion that mystery matters ma and squanders eternity on a beat of time she pours herself totally completely on a beat of time as when the soul draws near the still of birth adjoining mortal time to timelessness a spark of deity now here is the spark of deity earlier it was the eye of deity we just seeing here lost in matters giving its luster vanishes in the inconscient plane so it came entered in the inconscient plane that is a great thing in fact that is one of the mightiest beautiful most beautiful kind of a thing which has happened as i told you there was a zero out of that zero arose night out of that arose inconscient out of that inconscient when it was teased things moved forward etc 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 now what is going to happen a luster has entered into the inconscience itself this fundamental light which came on 29 february got submerged into the inconscient as much as say a spark of deity lost in matter scribble is lost and vanishes in the inconscient way that transfigures as a transitory glow of a magic fire so now dissolved in bright ecstasy yeah. so dissolved herself now into her usual air you see the message she whatever she has to deliver the message she has delivered whatever she has to do she has done and when the messenger she has receded gone back to her home the single call the uncompanion power she the call she is in companion power she the call telling us come on get up awake awakening rain she came here she gave that call to the mortal here 
and she has now drawn back. When she uses a call, that call does not get frustrated. It has its own power to make you do certain things and you do them. The hue and marvel of the supernal beam, she look no more on our mortality. That is an act of grace on our part. She look no more on our mortality. You guys would have got stuck with her. <laughs> she, <laughs> you would not have been able to see the possibility of the divine coming as an avatar. The excess of beauty, natural to God kind, could not afford its claim on time-born eyes to mystic real for space tenancy. Her body of glory was expunged from heaven. The reality and wonder lived no more. Her body of glory was expunged from ex was expunged. As I told you last time, this is a very clever way of telling many things. <laughs> See? Clever, way of clever way of telling many things was expunged. Passive voice suddenly changing. See. There is no, no, no mention of that thing at all here. No. Why it is passive? No. <laughs> she didn't say. No. <laughs> there is no. Why it is passive? <laughs> it's very important. Was explained by explained by whom? Well, you can always say that explained by heaven. There she has come as a space tenant. She is living as a, and from her house she was explained by whom? By the lord of the house, well, she wouldn't care about that. The manage, if she manages to get into that house, she is, it is impossible to expand her out by the faculties of space and all that. She is so more powerful than that, you see. She can be expelled, she can be withdrawn, she can be asked to go back by the Supreme Himself. Yes, you have done your job, now you come back. And she is kind of forced to vacate the place, making room for him to come. The reality and wonder, again, that reality and wonder, that ambassadors, that divine goddess, is at least all that. She has gone back. There was a common light of earthly day. Well, so we have got now daily routine things happening here, day after day, our routines continuing here. Because she is not there now. Well, it happens every now and then. You get a very marvelous guest in your house. You enjoy his company for a few days in the house. Have nice time and all that kind of a thing. But then he has to go back to his house, return to his home and all that thing. And you suddenly feel lonely, sorry, sad. And you immerse, you kind of carry on your daily activities remembering constantly, you see, see. There was a common light of earthly day. As I told you, this is the perfect echo of first verse line. A franchise from the respite of pity. What a conviction. Respite of pity. He is free from that respite which comes as a result of pity. So there is no respite now. You have to do your daily activities now. Continue to carry on your routines, you see. Once more, the rumor of the speed of life pursued the cycles of her blinded quest. Her lives. Life's blinded quest pursued. And then, the daily routine is going on. What are the routine thing? All sprang to their unwearing daily as get up in the morning, do your routine thing, go to the market, go to the, go to the, in the office, Go here, go there, whatever has to be done. You see. The thousand people into the soil and tree, the thousand people. Into the, now, this is a totally new theme altogether. The thousand people. Now, here is the clue of when all this was happening. The thousand people to the soil and tree, as I told you earlier, this is the transition period between Satya Yuga and Trita Yuga. When the mentally developed animal is ready to make room 
for the higher creature. There are already great faculty, great animals, so to say, not the physical animal in the occult world who have great mental capacities. They come here, do their work. As I told you earlier, Hanuman is a monkey, monkey Vanara, we call him Hanuman, you see. He is a great mentally developed vibhuti creature, our own calling. He comes here to help the avatar, Vana. So the thousand people belong to that category, who are ready to appear here as the mental beings, you see. The thousand people of the soil and tree obeyed the unforcing instant earl and leader here it is uncertain mind. Mind is always uncertain here. But the leader himself is uncertain about it because he has not developed supra rational mental faculties. You see. Alone who stares at the future's covered face, man lifted up the burden of his fate. And Savitri to awoke among these tribes. So that is the time, that is the moment in the history of evolution when Savitri's work begins. The transition between the Satya Yuga and Tita Yuga. It is from that point onward when the mental being is kind of fully ready to appear here on the earth. When the mental being is there, Manomaya Purusha, when he is here, then begins the work of Savitri. And therefore Savitri too awoke among these tribes, these of the thousand peoples of the soil and tree. Yes. yes. And we said this, this Savitri's story happened at this era? Savitri is happening constantly. Stop talking at that time. Yes. It's continuing. Continue. See, don't divide her into segments of time. Don't, yeah. don't divide her into segments of time. Her work is there. That avatarhood, his and Ashwapati's, they are not to be fragmented into bits of time. They are there. Who's gone? When the full work comes here, you can say today, in this hour, the full work. So the story of Savitri, that is the significant myth of Savitri, continuously being written. See, he says, and Savitri too awoke among these tribes, is a very clear indication. These tribes correspond to these thousand people of the tree and She is waking up to her reality. She has been here on earth since the beginning. Since the beginning of the earth, whenever and wherever there was a possibility or the manifestation of a divine ray, I was present. That is what the mother said. Since the beginning of the earth, earth had lost her hope, but she was there. She will not allow earth to lose her hope. Because she is there, pushing her from behind. You see, pushing her from behind. That is what the ambassadors is there, that is what that dawn is there, all those things are there, you see. Yes. yes. Uh, he says, and Savitri too, the walk. Because the man lifted up the burden of his weight, man has come, ah, man and has come. Uh, man has come, man has come. now Savitri too. But the, the God also, huh? the God also, yeah. the God. It was No, this particular line no, has not much to do with the gods. No, the two, two. 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 It means before it was the God. No, but, the, the, but that the reference to, to, to the gods awakening is very far away. Here in the immediate context, thousand pebbles of the soil and tree. That is the immediate context. And among these tribes, he uses the word tribes, you see. He is not, there are variety of, as I, as I, as I have given that list of all the, the types of the time, you see. Among these tribes, Savitri to awoke. Now, in fact, well, let, let, let us quickly see this sentence. And Savitri to awoke 
among these tribes. Well, that is clear from the previous background that hasten to join who hasten these tribes that hasten to join the brilliant samanas chant. The brilliant samanas chant. Well, samanar. Who is the samanar? You see. Now various people are giving various <laughs> various well Madhu Pandey says it is uh, it, is, it is the supramental sun sun supramental sun is the summoner here but I will say that it is something different than that Savitri too hastened. In response to the Samana, this line you had to read that Savitri's birth was compelled by somebody. Savitri, who was that? It was Ashwapati who compelled her mortal birth, Ashwapati. So who is Samana? Basically, if you say it has to be Ashwapati. The immediate context. Ashwapati says, come on, Savitri, now time is up. You have to start your work. Now, who is Ashwapati? It is the divine avatar himself who tells Savitri. The Samanar is therefore the divine avatar himself now who tells the divine power, divine Shakti that now you have to start your work forward on you. You have to carry on. Man has lifted his word. Now it is time for you. It is the moment for you now to take things forward and do things. Because across the path of divine event, there is the mind of night which man cannot tackle. You have to come and do that work. It is not my work also. It is your work. And therefore, the call has joined the Samanas Chan call. So it is the divine avatar himself. Now why divine avatar? In the previous canto, we already seen that there is that yajna going on. There is the aspiration, there is the urge from the earth. And in response to that urge, that will, that yajna, the divine incarnation takes place. When the avatar comes, it is that avatar which now here becomes the brilliant summoner. So this, this is linked up with that yajna which was going on. That in, in yajna is an invocation for the birth of the avatar. And when the avatar comes, then it is he who tells Savitri, Savitri, now you have to take up the work yourself and carry forward. The goddess, divine goddess, the omniscient goddess, she has done her job. Now you have to take the mortal birth and do things in the mortal world. That is the brilliant Samanas chant. And lewd with the beauty of the parent ways, acclaimed the portion. She acclaimed their portion of ephemeral joy. She has taken the mortal birth. She has taken the mortal birth. But this brilliant seminar, I will, I will link up definitely with the avatar. It is avatar who summons the birth, who demands, who compels her mortal birth. Who comes? So you mean? Uh, the verb has done it and acclaimed. Huh? Has and acclaimed. That hasten to join the brilliant summer. This verb and this verb is Savitri who has done Yes. Yeah. She is doing the She has done She acclaimed. Yeah. She is doing the Yeah. Oh, I think it's not like that. And this measure, no? She acclaimed. She accepts now the the mortal birth. Yeah, okay. that's the thing. Yeah. But she knows without that, it doesn't go... Because, because, she acclaims because the avatar is telling her, is kind of commanding her to do that. Brilliant Samanar, the avatar. Samanar, who is the avatar? Samanar is the avatar himself, you see. You have to see Savitri, in the context of Savitri, this Samanar. Samanar cannot be simply the supramental sun there. It has to be somebody here. Who, Who can, can be? be but uh, in this case, 
No, no, and that is a uh, subclass. Lured by the beauty or the apparent way. Who is lured? No, no. This, this class. class. She or them? No, no, no. She is lured by the beauty or the apparent way. Uh, she. 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 Oh, okay. See, we will see that thing. Lured. See, that, that is how we have come. We became curious of the shadow yeah. of truth in the darkness and we had taken birth. We were lured. Same way, she is also, well, there is some, it, it means that even this mortality, there is something very beautiful, something true, something uh, genuine. And therefore, there is a kind of a lure for that. And acclaimed portion of their ephemeral joy.